my beloved people, first of all this morning, if it's necessary to do so, I apologize for uh, the happy presence of these instruments of torture that you see in church this morning. Uh, if they are inconvenient, I'm, I'm delighted. And because we are doing some work in the church that we have needed to do for a long, long time and just simply have not been able to get to it. Um, I also wish to bring to your attention that the Blessed Sacrament is not in the church right now. So it would only be uh, just during Mass and after I will consume the extra host. So there is no Blessed Sacrament in the church after Mass. And these side altars are not, they have no Blessed Sacrament in them in spite of the fact that uh, there are candles burning uh, on them. So you simply bow, you do not genuflect. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in my beloved people. It is not a matter of becoming dramatic about what we have just read. But of all the gospel stories that we read as coming from our blessed Lord, this one here has to be the most pointed and the most serious instructional sermon that our Lord gave. And we'd best hear it. As I said last week, most of the books that you read, and there are libraries, libraries that are filled with the books of spiritual life, and they all come from this very brief instruction of our blessed Lord. And it's a very uncompromising instruction. Either you do what you're told to do, or you suffer the consequences. That's what is said to us this morning. Sometimes I hear the complaint, well, maybe you are not approaching this correctly. Maybe you should spend a little more time on the catechism. Well, to begin with, about eight or nine years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, I'm not terribly sure this morning, I didn't look it up before Mass, but about eight or nine years ago, we spent over an entire year on nothing but the Catechism. And one time around is plenty. Some people, and first of all I'd like to say this, lest perhaps you might think that I'm downgrading the catechism. I'm not. But the catechism, and this is for, as to be properly understood, is for children. And the catechism is for those who are trying to learn how to become Catholic, the catechumens. This is what the catechism is for and about. It merely tells one what one has to do in order to be a Catholic. And then the catechism is finished. But some of us continue the catechism for the rest of our lives. And then we wonder, after a long period of time, why we have not 
made any advance in the spiritual life. Why it is that we are still hungry, that we're not satisfied, that we're, there's something that we are supposed to be doing that is simply not being done. And why is that? Why is it, as we look to our children, why is it that our children, perhaps, those of us who have children, who our children see us in church, and they see us in church demonstrate the highest degree of piety. And they see that. They witness that. They study that. And they see us in church demonstrate the highest degree of humility. and all such like. And then our children, as we step across the threshold of the church and go outside and go home, they see us kick the door down. And they see us curse and swear and become angry and become ugly and inspire fear and suspicion. And our children wonder. They don't say anything, but because they haven't said anything, doesn't mean they don't wonder. And we go to confession. And we confess in the confessional, I've been angry 30 times. I've lost my temper 50 times. And so on. And 25 years later, we go to confession and we confess, I've lost my temper 50 times and I was angry 30 times. And 25 years after that, we still say the same thing. Why is that? Why is that? During these days, we have been going through a series of little treatises. And a very serious subject is being discussed. And it's amazing how many of us have not read it. Why do we complain about not being taught the catechism? The catechism does not tell us how The catechism tell us, tells us merely what. The bulletins, my beloved people, and this is not to say how well we do our work here. This is the same work that should be done by any place that takes the matter of saving souls seriously.
the bulletins are intended to instruct and tell how one is to go into the interior life. You can take that or you can leave it. Two men went up to the temple to pray. But one was a Pharisee. A Pharisee is a doctor of the law. And you can know for sure that this good man, or poor man, or whatever kind of man you want to call him, knew his catechism. It's plain and obvious that he knew his catechism. They knew it well. He taught it, as a matter of fact. And when he went up, had to go all the way up to the front of the church, all the way up, for him to put on his hurly-burly. And he started the big process of reminding Almighty God, look, Lord, at how good I am. I do this, and I do that. And I don't do this, and I don't do that. Don't you notice, Lord, that I am a very good man? And the people, no doubt, who were in the church and saw all this great demonstration of humility and piety unquestionably had to say, oh, indeed, isn't he holy? He is the epitome of what I would need to be, of what I would like to be. And the poor old man who entered into the church, he hid because he was so ashamed of himself. And he was convinced he was so bad that everybody saw how bad he was. He was, and he certainly knew, uh, knew that God saw how very bad he was. And in seven words, in Latin it's five words, in seven words, That man said more than the Pharisee said in a lifetime of self-adulation, of self-presentation of holiness, in a lifetime of just words, words, words. And as a consequence, and our Lord was quite specific about this, here comes the instruction. And I say, let those who have ears, let them hear. I tell you, says our Lord, this one, went home justified. The other did not. And our children hear these things, and they witness these things, and they wonder. Later in life, The seed that is planted in these particular circumstances and occasions, even though that seed stays in the ground, the day will come 
when that seed will sprout. And it may not sprout the kind of tree that we had intended it to be. So we don't understand rejection. And when we go to confession, year after year after year after year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, and we go through the same process all the time, all the time, all the time. We think by this simple act that we are doing what is required of us to save our immortal souls. And pay attention to this. Not so. Not so. Not so. Now, you say, well, what about confession? Should we need to go to stop, uh, go to confession? Not at all. Bulletin after bulletin, you hear the message, go to confession, go to confession, go to confession. And it continues to be go to confession. But confession I have lost my temper 25 times. It was 30 a while ago. I've lost my temper 30 times since my last confession. And for 25 years I've been saying the same blessed thing. It is not the importance is not in the humility, with quotation marks, of confessing that sin. But the important thing is, what am I doing about my temper, or my anger, or my lust, or whatever? If after 25 years or 30 years we see no improvement, then something is wrong. You've heard me in here speaking, it'll probably come up next week in the bulletin, of using the word conversio. Conversio is a Latin word, of course. It means a turning. A turning around. We walked, naturally we walked out of the Garden of Eden, we were thrown out because of our pride. And we walked away from it. And as soon as our pride took over, and as soon as the whole effect of things took over, the very instant, what was the first thing that man did? He put clothes on himself. Because for the first time, the sting of immorality was upon him. Now what we have to do is to turn around. You say well, the rule of St. Benedict is for monks. Yes, indeed. It certainly is. But remember that monks are, and nuns are no more than men and women who have vowed their lives to save their souls. And therefore, the rule applies to everybody. And this turning around applies to everybody. 
And that's where the interior life comes in. We have to turn right about face and start back to the entrance of the garden. And the only way, the only road, the only path, the only road sign is humility. More humility. And still more humility. You can go to confession from now until doomsday. If you don't put this into practice, your confessions are not going to help you. They're not going to, your confessions are not a passport to salvation. And, go, and the sacrament of penance is not a passport to salvation. You and I have to do something positive enough to put you and I in heaven. As soon as man left the garden. The only security he had was a few pebbles of the earth that he could scrape up with his hands unto himself. That was his security. I tell you something that happened, I think during this past week, I do not know all of the details, but in one of our chapels, there are some people that come to it. And these people, good people enough, were working at a certain place. And the owners of that certain place, quite, it was a fair sized organization the owners of that were of this pull unto yourself all that you can, you know? And if my barn is not big enough to hold all I've got, then I'll build a bigger barn to put all that I've got into it. But I want all I get my hands on. And of course the employees knew that this was going on. They were not going about it necessarily in the bad way. I'm not saying that they were stealing or anything of that sort, but I'm saying, objectively speaking, how they were grabbing at materialism. Well, this past week, the three head men in the organization took off in an airplane. It was a foggy day. and the airplane crashed. My blessed people, we don't play games with God. And the Pharisee and the publican. If you look at it from objective perspective, just looking at it, say if you were a newspaper reporter and you walked into the church and you could see both the, this particular Pharisee and this particular publican, not knowing anything about either, what would be your first impression? Oh, look. Look at that good man way up there. Isn't that a sight? Isn't that beautiful? Wow, that is really lovely. 
What's wrong with this creature, creature back here? Can't he go all the way in? Why does he have to slink around in the shadows of the church? Why can't he go up there too? Oh, there must be something wrong with him. Is that not the way we would judge? God does not judge in that way. And that's another reason why we here, as we sit and look and listen, and as I've told you before, for, un, for some unexplainable reason, which we cannot possibly go into, because we don't know why or how, that this particular monastery has been placed by somebody, God, or whoever at a crossroad. And we get the cross currents from all over the country. And the story is the same, no matter from which direction it comes. And what we have done, because it's much easier, I could get here, you know, it would be much more simple for me to pick up the catechism and read question number one. Why did God make man? God made man to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be with him for all eternity. Oh, that would be so easy to talk about. And besides that, not that I'm saying we have it, but it doesn't take any intelligence to discuss that. And as those older ones of us that used to go to grammar school and sister would get the catechism out and sister would make us memorize that word for word. You couldn't even leave out a comma. You had to cross all your T's properly and put the periods where they belonged. But we didn't know any Catholicism. It's a lot easier. But what we are doing today, and as you say, as you might grasp from this, that we here are pointing our finger at the youthful teachers today who are going to just this, and it brings out externalisms. You've got to be doing something. You've got to be doing something. You've got to be saying your prayers. You've got to be doing novenas. You've got to be making visits. You've got to be going to benedictions. You've got to be making pilgrimages. You've got to be going here, go there, go everywhere. Go, go, go. Doing, 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 doing. That has nothing to do with being holy. That's externalisms. And if I could take up your time, which I know I'm not, but you know I you hope I'm not, to tell you how utterly stupid some of these external necessities are, you would sit there and say, Father, please get serious. It is all inside all of the activity, all of it. Believe me, all of it is inside of me. That's where it is. And until and unless I fall on the knees of my heart before Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I can give my body up to be burned. It will profit me nothing. Everything is inside of me. And it is there which I have to present to my God. 
and the number of masses that I attend and the number of confessions that I go to, the number of times I receive any of the sacraments, the number of novenas, the number of rosaries, the number of anything that I have gone into unless my beloved, that is, if I'm still walking in this direction, profit me nothing. It's only in the return trip that these things begin to show their value. And on the way back, then we can say confession, then we can say rosary, then we can say mass, then we can say all these other things. But it's only on the way back that they take on importance. And until we are on our way back, it profits us nothing. Perhaps we do not understand the word nothing. So as we go on, and it's not a matter of being difficult or tedious or ugly or whatever. It's a matter of looking at the situation the way it is. It's a matter of understanding the situation the way it is. And if you notice also, in these various and sundry places, which today we call traditional centers, each one has a pet issue that that particular place promotes. It's almost like the politicians, you know, which the first thing that we ask the politician is, uh, what, is what issues are you involved in, you know? And according to the issue that he or she or it is involved in, is the way we will form our opinion. Issues. We're not interested in issues. And these issues that we make so much of a din over have nothing to do with the salvation of my soul. The only thing that matters if I wish to save my soul is when I approach this railing right here. What is going on inside of me? Novus Ordo draws its people by way of its hurly burly. We draw our people by way of issue. And we nail down our people by way of issue. And have you not heard some of you, not all of you I know, but some of you have you not heard, if you go to that particular church and you come to our church, we will not give you Holy Communion. Have you not heard that, some of you? Which means, if you come here, you have got to do what I tell you. Private opinion has put more people in hell than this world dreams of. And the doctrine of the church 
is not open to public private opinion. Look what, Prot what, Pro what, what private opinion has done to Protestantism. And private opinion is doing the same thing to traditionalism. And I heard it said by someone not so long ago that traditionalism is Protestantism in reverse. And that is pretty a pretty accurate assessment, isn't it? Yes, I get ugly. It isn't because I don't love. But it's time, my beloved people, that we got up from sleep and did what we have to do to save our souls. We're not doing it sometimes, and yet we're using all the instruments that, I, my goodness, I've got to quit. It's awfully late. But when I get into this, I, I warned you last week it was going to be tough today, didn't I? You can't say that you weren't warned. But this morning's gospel, please go home and read it again and again and again and read the bulletins over and over until you know them. Your bulletins, my beloved people, have an answer, not because of any wisdom particularly on our part, but because we are going to the source and we are presenting what we found at the source. And we pray that you will hear it, that you will listen, otherwise all is lost, my beloved people. <laughs>